Ooh, welcome back to Fourth Angle. Thomas, I don't think we're in the studio. Where are we? No, we're absolutely not in the studio. A beautiful sunny day here at the lovely Dick Hoover Stadium. We're here at Haggerty Field in Tioga to preview our state championship matchup. One will have their first loss of the season when 4-0 main animal and 5-0 Windsor clash on Friday night. Last time the Black Knights beat the Spartans was 2016 and you know we got to mention it, the Spartans are riding a 26 game winning streak. Well Ian, you said one team's winning streak will end this week, but so will one's losing streak as their next matchup features Shenango Valley and Johnson City both still looking for their first victory of the season. They've looked really good on the offense and they took care of Horseheads in Horseheads a couple weeks back. I gotta go with Vestal on this one. I'm gonna go 24 to 10, a little bit of a lower scoring one. You could argue that it's the best defense in section four. I would argue that actually. Um, so I'm gonna yeah. I'm gonna roll with Vestal in this one, uh, 49 to 21, maybe a little bit, uh, bit of a m bigger blowout maybe than you, you would think. But I think Vestal's offense, uh, we've seen how good they can be. And I think they're not gonna play with their food in the playoff game, right? I think, uh. I think Coach Grunden's gonna, you know, know get this game over and done with how excited are you to be able to show off Dick Hoover Stadium and the athletic facilities here at Vestal High School yeah we love hosting events here um, we pride ourselves on our facilities and providing good opportunities and good experiences for the kids whether they're our kids or other students in the area I just can't get 380 to 130 out of my head I mean that's a disparity where in most games if you see it it the team that has 380 is winning by 21 points. I mean, I'm going to go Waverly. I'm going 28, 20. I, I think it's going to be a good one. Oh, weapons all over the field from, you know, quarterback Caden Bellis, the returning class D player of the year, to tailback Drew Maycumber, fullback Usman Duncanson, wideouts Valentino Rossi and Evan Sickler. And I just have a hard time believing there are two teams in the East are as good as Tioga and um, or in the same ballpark. So I like Tioga pretty big, 49-7. So why don't you give us some insight on our first play, we'll show it right now. Summer's pass is slightly behind Abu, and he uh, shows excellent ball skills, adjusting and making the catch, but before he could really uh, gain his composure, uh, Vestal's strong safety, Gannon, diagnoses the play really quickly and flies up there and tackles Abu for a two-yard loss, forcing a fumble. We're gonna start on the defensive end, and number five, main animals, Adam DeSantis. It's some love for the big guy. Scoop and score the ball's lost. He doesn't care, pick it up. First touchdown in DeSantis family history per his dad, of course. And he's gonna go on to roll against Forks. In the backfield, looking, 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 gonna heave it up for Shane Wallace. He's in the end zone, where is it? Comes down with it, that's gonna be a touchdown for UE. UE would drop this game, however. We're gonna go to number three, Felix Morales, the fourth, feels the force for the Johnson City Wildcats, gets the hand up, boom, 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 in the pink, UE's gone, going, going, going. This one, JC's gonna roll in this one. Looking, gonna be looking for someone. It's gonna be Tino Rossi, Valentino Rossi, up there somewhere, chuck it up, gonna come down with it, get off of him. Just, I mean, there's no stopping this guy. There's no stopping Tayoga as they're undefeated winning 34 straight games. We're gonna go to number one, Ashton Werner and Cohen Werner to win it fourth and 10. Ashton looking for his brother, looking Cohen on the sideline. Toe tag, drag for some swag as Windsor's gonna take this one 12 to seven. Just don't try and overkick it. Just small, medium, large. Oh, just, just missed it. As time went on, Thomas finished up youth and modified, and last year wanted to hang it up. She tried, took a year off because she wasn't sure what to do. Um, she missed it, and she was like, I want to go back to football. I'm like, okay, let's go. What Chantel and Allie didn't know was that she'd ever see the field. Um, I was shocked, um, nervous. So come week one in the fourth quarter, Coach Clough came up with an idea. I called her over, I said, Allie, I'm going to throw the ball. I don't really remember. It was just like super fast. But someone who will never forget it, mom, of course. She caught that ball and of course mom was screaming as loud as she could. <laughs> uh, what I remember most about the team was not so much the Friday nights and the games. It was, it was fun to come to practice because it was such a tight group. Everybody's buddy, buddies. Still friends today, and that's why we're able to get together 50 years later. Coaches are great around here, um, so you know the, the stigma is you know coaches are jerks and stuff, but you know they, it's the heat of the battle, and sometimes they you know they just get over they get over excited. He caught it. No, he got his foot in. That's a catch. You talk to him. You know it's a, it's a good time there. Oh, it's a heck of a play.